All right, welcome back, folks, to our second video lesson for Unit 2. Today we're going to talk about adding and subtracting real numbers. Should be, hopefully, a little bit of a review for you guys today, so let's jump right into it. All right, so first of all, let's just go through and review. What we're going to do a talk again today is just about adding and subtracting integers. Again, hopefully it should be a review. We'll look at adding just regular numbers, uh, positives and negatives, and also talk about how to add and subtract some rational numbers, which are fractions. All right, so first of all, here we go. We got 3 plus 5. This should be really easy again. Wow, look at this. Okay, 3 plus 5, that's 8. All right, now next one, we got negative 3 plus negative 5. So remember, what are we doing? We add two negatives together. Um, you can think old school and go back to a number line. Uh, we'll say 0. You got negative 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so we're starting here. Then we're adding to it negative 5. So what does it mean we're adding a negative? What that means is we are going to get more negative, right? So we're going to head on a number line to our left. So negative 3, adding negative 5 to it again, that's going to give us negative 8. Okay, so adding two negatives together is just like adding the, the numbers themselves, 3 and 5, and just making that more negative, so make it negative 8. Next one, what happens when I add 3, a positive plus a negative? What happens when I add a negative? Okay, well, adding a negative, I know we got double signs here, so think about this. It's not 3 plus minus 5, but when you think about adding a negative, this is almost like saying 3 minus 5. So again, we're like subtracting. So if you start with 3 and you take away 5, that's going to get us to negative 2. Okay, so adding a negative is just like subtracting. Next one, I got 3 plus, negative, sorry, negative 3 plus 5. Uh, again, this one should be an easy one, starting at negative 3. Now when we add, if you think back to our number line over here, when we add, we're going to move to our right, meaning we're going to gain 5 from that negative 3. So think about if we're missing 3, we add 5 to it, that's going to give us positive 2. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, a little bit of review. Now let's take a look at how do we add rational numbers. Again, rational numbers are anything that can be expressed as a fraction. So we have two decimals here. You may look at these, well, hey, decimals, they're not, um, they're not fractions. But remember, anything that is a, um, a decimal like this that's ending or has a repeating pattern to it can also be considered a rational number. So 7.4 plus negative 9.5. So if you want to do this by hand, remember that when you do this, we're going to take our 7.4, and when we add or subtract decimals together, we're going to take and line up the decimals of each number. So here I have my 0.5, then I have my negative 9. So I have 7.4 plus negative 9.5. So here I'm adding these. Now, think about the last example we did up here when we added 3 plus negative 5. What we did say is that this is basically subtracting the two numbers. Okay, now we can go about doing this whole uh, subtracting by lining up the decimals. But remember, at this point, I want you guys to be able to just use your calculator when doing this. So punch in 7.4 plus negative 9.5, and you should check right away. You should get negative 2.1. Again, we start off with a positive 7.4. We're adding to it negative 9.5. Again, it's like subtracting 9.5, so we're subtracting a larger value. And our answer we get is negative. Okay, next one we have... Uh, Fractions, negative two-fifths plus four-fifths. So again, we're starting negative, and we're adding to it positive. Now, when we add fractions, okay, remember we're talking about fractions, you can think of their parts or chunks of the whole. So right here we're talking about a whole of five, of fifths. So when we add negative two-fifths plus four-fifths, when we add fractions, we are going to keep the denominator the same. We're going to express our answer in terms of fifths, in terms of that still that whole. Now, what we're really going to be doing is taking negative 2 and adding to it 4. So we're going to keep that same denominator, what's called a common denominator between the two. And now we're just adding negative 2 plus 4. Think starting negative, adding 4 to it, that's going to give us a result of 2 fifths. Okay, so key thing here when we add fractions together or subtract fractions, we must have a common denominator. So the next example, what happens if we don't have a common denominator between these two numbers? Okay. Now, first of all, notice we are taking negative 3 eighths and adding to it another negative. So looking back at the example we had up here, when you add two negatives together, you're going to get a bigger negative as a result. 
Now the issue with this, and the biggest mistake some students are going to make, is by just adding the denominators, saying, okay, this is going to give me 11, and then negative 3 plus negative 2 is going to give me negative 5. Okay? Well, remember, anytime we add fractions or subtract fractions together, we want to get a common denominator. So how do we find a common denominator between 8 and 3? Well, we want to think about what is a number, a common multiple, that 8 and 3 have in common. Okay, now the easiest way to figure this out is just take your two denominators, 8 and 3, and multiply them together to give you 24. So I can easily get a common multiple or common denominator of 24. Okay, so I'm going to change each of these to have a denominator of 24. Now what I have to do is think about how did I, if I change the denominator by um, a certain factor to get a larger value, I also have to do the same thing. In order to keep the fraction the same, whatever I do to the denominator, I must also do to the numerator. So I went from 8 to 24. So what did I multiply 8 by to get to 24? Well, we multiplied it by 3. So I'm going to take my top value, negative 3, and multiply that by 3. Okay, then I'm going to do the same thing over here. I had started with 3. And now I have negative 2 on the top. Now, even though the negative's here, careful, notice how I'm putting the negative to the top number. Because the denominator, we're not really going to change, other than obviously finding this common denominator. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take negative 2, which was my original numerator. And what do I multiply 3 by to get 24? Well, we multiplied it by 8. Okay? So I'm going to take negative 2 and multiply that by 8 as well. So what does that give me? Well, that gives me negative 9 over 24. Add to that negative 16. Somebody's got to go to the office. Uh-oh. So negative 9 plus negative 16, what does that give us? Again, that's going to make us more negative. Okay, now that's going to give us negative 25 over 24. Let me rewrite that over here where you can obviously see the number. You get negative 25 over 24. Last thing we want to check is can we simplify that? In this case, no. We could write it as a mixed number, but I'm okay with just leaving it as an improper fraction for now. Okay, so this is just some just quick run through on how to add and subtract, or really in this case, how to add um, numbers, but looking primarily at positives and negatives, and then also how we work with fractions. All right, so let's go ahead and do some more examples. Now we're going to combine some things we talked about in the previous lesson. So first one, I have 3 and 3 fourths plus 4. So I have a mixed fraction plus a whole number. So what I'm going to do here, and what I suggest you to do, is we need to write this as an improper fraction. So again, here's the process. We're going to start by taking 4. We're going to multiply that by 3, and then add whatever's on top. So 3 and 4 is 12. Add 3 will give me 15 over 4, add to that 4. Now you may look here and say, okay, well I have 4 as my common denominator, right? Well careful, remember when we add a fraction to a whole number? A whole number has a, a, sorry, a denominator of 1. 4 over 1 is the same thing as 4. So in this case I cannot just add 15 over 4 plus 4 and say, okay, I got eh, 16, I don't even know what that would be, it doesn't work. But now look at, I, again, I need a common denominator. So what's a common denominator between 4 and 1? Well, again, I can take and multiply the two denominators together, get 4. So common denominator of 4. 15 over 4 doesn't change. Second number, I'm going to have a denominator of 4. So again, I went from 1 to 4, so I multiplied by that, that factor of 4. I'm going to do the same thing on top. 4 times 4 would give me 16. So now I'm just adding 15 plus 16, and I'm going to keep my denominator of 4. So 15 plus 16, that would be 31. So this one simplifies out to 31 over 4. Next example. What the heck do these bars mean on the outside? Remember, this represents what's called an absolute value. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start on the inside. Let's simplify the inside first. 3 plus negative 11. So I'm starting at positive 3, adding to it negative 11. So I'm adding a negative. That's going to end up being just like subtraction. So 3 minus 11, what is that going to give me? That's going to give me the absolute value of negative 8. Since I just simplified the inside, I'm going to still going to keep it as an absolute value. Now again, what is the absolute value of negative 8? What does that mean again? Remember, absolute value describes the distance that negative 8 is away from 0 on a number line. So this would be, again, here's the quick rule I gave you, is it's simply going to make this number positive. So that's going to give me positive 8. 
So again, just quickly reviewing absolute value. Next one, I have the square root. Square root of negative 5 plus 30. So I have a negative, adding to it a positive, so I'm going to get more positive here. So this is like negative 5 plus 30. Let's see what that's going to get me. That's going to give me the square root of 25, just like the absolute value. I'm going to simplify the inside first. Now what's the square root of 25? Okay, the square root, we're going to look for a number times itself. That would give me 25. You can punch this into a calculator. This is going to give me the value of 5. All right, so next I want you to pause the video. Pause it right now, and I want you to give these three problems a shot. Okay, we're adding two negatives here as decimals. Here we have fractions, so again, rational numbers. And here we have absolute value of adding some rational numbers. So I want you to pause the video and see what you get. All right, so let's take a look at what we got. So again, the first one, I showed you just lining up the decimals. Again, you can punch this into a calculator. But you're adding two negatives together, so what's going to give you is a larger negative value. So here, negative 17.1. Okay, this next one, I have a rational number. Adding two fractions together, I had to find a common denominator. And I'll give you, I did something a little different here. I did 4 and 6. Now, yes, I could, like I said before, multiply 4 and 6 to get 24, and so that's a common denominator. In this case, I look for the least common multiple between 4 and 6, which is 12. So I did a little different way, which is perfectly fine. 4 goes into 12, so does 6. So what I did is change each of the denominator to a value of 12, and then I changed the numerator. So you can see here, 4 times 3 would give me 12. I'm going to take the top, multiply by 3 to get 15. 6 times 2 would give me 12, so I'm going to take 5 times 2 to give me 10. Adding 15 and 10 together, again, I'm going to keep my denominator the same. I'm going to keep this whole of 12. 15 plus 10 gives me 25, so I'm going to end with 25 over 12. Okay, and in the last one, I have absolute value of negative 4 sevenths plus 1 one third. So again, I'm inside the absolute value. I'm adding two rational numbers together. So I have to get a common denominator. So this one I did, multiply 7 and 3 and say, okay, 21 would be an easy common denominator to have. So I did, okay, 7 times 3 would give me 21, so I take 4 times 3 to give me negative 12. Notice how this was negative, and I applied the negative to the numerator. And then 3 times 7 would give me 21, so I took the 1 times the 7 to give me 7. So I'm taking negative 12 plus 7 on top. I'm going to leave the denominator as 21. Negative 12, I'm adding a positive to it, so that's going to get me less negative, so that's going to give me negative 5. Then don't forget about the absolute value bars at the end. Negative 5 over 21, even though it's a fraction. All right, I want to think, okay, it's going to make this number positive. I want to think how far away is this from 0. And it's 5 over 21 units away from 0, so it turns into 5 over 21. Okay, looking at these last couple examples, there's two properties of adding that I want to talk about. Okay, the first one's called the, the commutative property. All right, it says that if you add two numbers, a plus b, it would be the same thing. This property of addition applies that if you were to take the two numbers and flip them, b plus a, you should get the same value. Here's what this property is saying. Say I take two random numbers. Say 3 plus 9. 3 plus 9 gives me 12. So what this property says, if I were to take and add 3 plus 9 in the opposite order, say 9 plus 3, notice here how I still get the number 12. So when you add numbers, the order in which you add them does not make a difference. Okay, so in this case, I'm adding two numbers. I can add 3 and 9, 9 and 3. No matter what, I'm going to get the same, prop, uh, same solution. Sorry. The next property says very similar thing, but instead of adding two numbers together, I'm going to add three numbers. It's called the associative property. So say I take uh, 2 plus 4 plus 6. What this property says is when I add three things together, I'm going to start by adding two. So I'm going to add the two and the four first. That's going to give me six. Then I'm going to add to that value the other number left over, which is six. And six plus six is going to give me 12. Okay, now applying this with the, com the commu commutative property, sorry, I can't talk, is if I take two plus four plus 6, and now instead of adding the 2 and 4 together, if I group the 4 and 6 and say I'm going to add those first, I'm going to keep my 2, but now 4 plus 6 gives me 10. Well, what's 2 plus 10? 12. So it really says the same thing as the commutative property, is that the associative property says when I add 3 or more numbers together, the order in which I add them doesn't matter. But anytime you do any sort of operation in math, you always start with two numbers. 
Okay, so I'm going to add any of the two numbers together in this series, and I can, no matter what, I'm going to get the same result. Okay, so these are two just basic properties of adding um, uh, real numbers. All right, so now we focused on addition. Now let's go to subtraction. Okay, so subtraction is where people start to get a little tripped up, even though it's not not overly difficult. Okay, so I have three minus five is the first one. So three minus five. There's multiple ways you can think about this. Again, you can look at a number line. You start from three, and you're going to take away five. Well, here's the issue: starting at three, take away five. When you take away five from three, you're going to take away the three you already have. But then there's two left over that you're going to take away. So what this becomes, 3 take away 5, is you're going to get a negative 2. So when you subtract a larger value, it's going to become negative. One way some individuals like to see this, 3 minus 5, is you can also view this as an addition problem. 3 plus negative 5. So you're adding to it or taking away a negative 5 from that value. Either way, you get the same result. So we can view subtraction as an addition problem, which some people like to do. Okay, so next one I have 3 minus negative 5. So again, we see this double sign here. Here's what this is saying. 3 minus negative 5. Okay, now what happens when we subtract a negative? Well, this it always reminds me of English class, okay? Um, I don't not have anything kind of means, or how about this? I ain't not going to do it, which some people might say. Well, ain't not, that's a double negative. So what happens to a double negative? Well, double negative turns positive. So this is a saying when you don't not have anything, technically you're saying you have something. So 3 minus negative 5 turns into 3 plus 5, which gives you 8. So when you subtract the negative from it, it turns right into an addition problem. Okay, next one. I have negative 3 minus 5. Again, some people like to view this, and this is what I like to do, is see this as 3 plus negative 5. You can turn a subtraction problem into addition, all right, by basically changing the sign afterwards. So negative 3 plus negative 5, you're going to get more negative. This is going to give you negative 8. And last one, negative 3 minus, and this should say, sorry, you guys might want to write this in, kind of blurred together, should be 3 minus, negative 3 minus negative 5. Should be an extra negative there, so make sure you make that change. So in this one, negative 3 minus negative 5, Negative 3 minus, I'll group this together, negative 5. So here I'm subtracting a negative. This is that double negative. Turns into a positive. So negative 3 plus 5. Okay, that's going to get me from a negative, and it's going to get me less negative into a positive, and that's going to give me 2. Okay, so one way you like to view subtraction is you really can change it into an addition problem. Right? This is where some people get tripped up, but again, it, it's not overly difficult, not much different than addition. So let's look at some more examples here. We're going to look at rational numbers. Again, things that can be expressed as fractions. First one, I have 12.4 minus negative 3.5. So this would be the same thing, minus a negative. It would be like adding the two numbers together. So 12.4 plus 3.5, that is going to give me 15.9. Next one, I have negative 2 over 9 minus 4 over 9. So this one's just like we did with addition. We are looking for, anytime we uh, add fractions, to, or sorry, add or subtract fractions, we're looking for a common denominator, which we have. So when I look at this, really this is, I'm going to keep the denominator of 9, but I'm going to take my numerators, which are negative 2 minus 4. Notice how I'm adding or applying the negatives to the numerators, which you always want to do. So here I'm subtracting from a negative, one thing you might want to view this is as adding a negative. Okay, turn that ad subtraction into addition. So what's a negative 2 plus negative 4? That's going to give me negative 6 over 9. Okay, negative 6 over 9. Next one here, we have negative 3 over 5 minus, think of this, negative 2 over 3. So first thing you might want to do, Take this and change it to an addition sign. So if I change it to addition, I'm going to change the sign of two-thirds to a positive. But with here, I have, again, two fractions with different denominators, so I want a common denominator. So what's the common denominator of 5 and 3? Hopefully you're working ahead and thinking about this should be 15. Okay, so I went from 5 to 15. What's the factor? The factor is 3. So I'm going to take the negative. I'm going to apply the negative up top, negative 3. Multiply that by 3 is going to give me negative 9. 
I'm going to add to that. I'm going to change this denominator as well to 15. How do I get from 3 to 15? As I multiply by 5. So I'm going to take the top, which is now positive 2. Multiply that by 5 should give me 10. Okay, now I have negative 9 over 15 plus 10 over 15. I'm simply going to add the numerators together. Negative 9 plus 10 is going to give me 1 over 15. Okay, so just really applying our properties of addition here to subtraction. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to try the next three, okay? I want you to pause the video, see if you can figure out the next three. Okay, I'll give you a little more challenging problems here because we have a mixed fraction. We have these absolute value bars and then the square root. So if you need to, go look back at the addition problems that we did and see if you can turn these subtraction problems into addition. So go ahead, pause the video, give these a shot. All right, let's see what you got. Hopefully um, your answers match up with mine. We started with the mixed fraction. What I did right away is by using my cat method of multiplying and adding. I got 11 fourths minus 4. I put 4 over 1 because, again, a whole number as a fraction, as a rational number, is over 1. So then I notice, okay, I don't have a common denominator. So what's the common denominator of 1 and 4? would be 4. So 11 over 4 didn't have to change, but this one minus... I multiplied the 1 by 4, so 4 times 4 is 16. Notice, if you take 16 divided by 4, you get 4. So it's still the same number, just written differently. Subtracting 11 minus 16, I'm going to keep the denominator the same of 4. 11 minus 16 is negative 5. So you get negative 5 fourths. Next example, I have the absolute value of 3 minus negative 14. So minus a negative, that's going to turn into an addition problem. So plus 14. 3 plus 14 is 17. This gives me the absolute value of 17, which again describes the distance from 0, gives me positive 17. Last one, I have the square root of 39 minus 30. 39 is a larger number, so this one's really easy. 39 minus 30 starting inside gives me 9. The square root of 9 is going to be 3. Okay, so hopefully you got those problems correct. So again, we're subtracting real numbers in this one. Okay, so one property we talked about with addition was the commutative property and the associative property. Now let's see, does this same property apply to subtraction? So remember, the commutative property says that if I were to add two numbers together, say, again, I'll show you this with addition. I think I used 3 plus 9, said that was equal to 12. We said 9 plus 3 also equals 12. So let's see if that works for subtraction. So if I do 3 minus 9... What does that give me? Well, 3 minus 9, I'm taking away 9 from 3. That's going to give me negative 6. So now let's flip the numbers. 9 minus 3. Do I get negative 6? Well, 9 minus 3 is positive 6. So are negative 6 and positive 6 the same number? Well, you may look at this and say yes, but no, that negative 6 and positive 6 are t completely different values. Think of a number line, okay? A number line, this was 0, Positive 6 would be here, negative 6 would be somewhere over there. So these are two completely different values. So does, the, does this commutative property work for subtraction? And the answer is no. This property of addition does not apply itself to subtraction. Okay? So this, that property is only a property of addition and not subtraction. So the key thing here, when I said about addition, that order doesn't matter with subtraction Order does matter, and that's a key point. You might want to write that down. Order makes a difference. So let's see if this applies itself then to the associative properties. Say I was, again, three numbers. So we said 2 plus 4 plus 6 for addition. That gave me 12, right, if I paired these two together. And if I did it the opposite way of 2 plus 4 plus 6 and added the 4 and 6 together, that also got me 12. So with addition, the associative property worked. Let's see if it works when we subtract. So I'm going to take the same values, 2 minus 4 minus 6. I'm going to do 2 at a time because that's all I can do. 2 minus 4, what does that give me? Negative 2. Minus 6 from that. Negative 2 minus 6. Again, I'm subtracting from a negative, so I can make this turn into addition and say negative 2 plus negative 6 would give me negative 8. So now let's flip the order. So 2 minus 4 minus 6, let's start here with the 4 minus 6. Let's see if this ends up working out. What's 4 minus 6? 4 minus 6 is negative 2. So if I say 2 minus negative 2, is that going to give me negative 8? Well, I'm subtracting a negative, so I can add here, and I get 4. 
So do negative 8 and 4 match? Absolutely not. So what do we find out here? Does the associative property work for subtraction? For subtraction, sorry. No, it does not. Okay, so these two properties, the commutative property and associative property, what we talked about before is that order doesn't matter with addition. But here's the key thing with subtraction. The order in which you subtract things does make a difference. So this is one thing you have to keep in mind that the way you or subtract, subtract things does make a difference. All right, so now let's apply this to irrational numbers. So again, what the heck is an irrational number? Well, rational numbers are anything that can be expressed as a fraction. Irrational numbers are things that cannot be expressed as a fraction. So we talked about, you know, for example, the number pi, 3.149526. That's a run-on decimal that does not have a pattern to it, does not end. That's irrational. So things like, you'll see in this example, the radical 3, square root of 3. All right, that's an irrational number. So let's see what happens when we add and subtract rational and irrational numbers. Okay, so we talked about here, this example, we're adding two rational numbers. Is this possible? Well, yes, we've done this already, right? We can take two, put it over one, add to four fifth, or add to it four fifths. And all I gotta do with rational numbers when I add two rational is just get a common denominator. So common denominator here would be five. So four over five stays the same. 2 over 5 becomes 10 over 5, because I multiply the 1 by 5, the 2 by 5 gives me 10, and this is going to give me 14 over fifths, 14 over 5, 14 fifths. So when I add a rational plus a rational, notice here how I get a rational number. So what happens when I take a rational number such as 2, again rational expresses a fraction, this is 2 over 1, plus radical 3 to square root of 3. Okay, well 2... That stays the same. What's the square root of 3? So if you punch that quickly into your calculator, the square root of 3 is 1.73205, all this other stuff. So I'll just kind of write that down, 1.732, blah, blah, blah. That's going to give me, well, when I add these decimals together, it's going to give me 3.7320, dot, dot, dot. Okay, so what's the key point here that I'm trying to get? When you add a rational plus an irrational number, the result you get is an irrational number. Okay? Because we have to make or take into account those extra decimal places that are running on that are not ending or that not have a repeating pattern. And last one, you get an irrational versus an or plus an irrational number, just radical seven plus radical two. Well, how do I add these together? Well, again, if I add radical seven and radical two, the first thing I want to do. Let's just put these into a decimal. So radical 7 is 2.645 dot dot dot. Add to it radical 2. Radical 2, if you punch that into your calculator, will give you 1.414 Milwaukee. Yeah, decimal, decimal. It's going to keep going on and on. So when I add these together, you can see I have a run-on decimal plus a run-on decimal. What's that going to give me in the end? Well, I'm going to get about uh, this one will round up to about four point blah 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 blah. So what happens when you add an irrational and irrational number? You're also going to get an irrational number. So when we start working with the irrational numbers, which a lot of us don't like, that's where things are going to get a little tricky. Okay, and we'll talk about how do we add these later on when we when we look at irrational numbers. But that'll be again that'll probably be something we do second semester. So again, what we're focusing on here is just adding and subtracting real numbers. Not overly difficult stuff, but there's a lot of rules that we have to be able to apply, especially when we get to subtracting and especially when we throw in some negative values. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I know this is easy stuff, so we'll see you in class. Good luck on the practice problems. Peace.